Well, hello, LifeWave family, and welcome to our much-anticipated monthly Product Connect webinar. I'm Jeff Hildebrandt, Global Vice President of Marketing here at LifeWave, and it's an absolute pleasure to have each of you join us today. It's inspiring to me to see such an enthusiastic gathering of a community eager to learn and grow together. Now, as we step further into this year, it's clear that LifeWave is on an extraordinary path. We've kicked off with an amazing start, and the momentum we're experiencing is nothing short of inspiring. But what does it really mean? So beyond the numbers, accolades, and achievements, it's about the lives we touch and we transform. It's about the health that's been improved, the quality of life that's been elevated, and the doors of income opportunity that have been opened for so many. This journey is about making a positive and lasting impact, and every story of change is a testament to the mission that we're on together. So I'm humbled to be on this journey with each of you. I want to take just a moment to give back credit where it's truly due to each and every one of you. Your dedication, belief in our mission, and commitment to spreading wellness and opportunity are at the very reason for our collective success. Now, this growth and momentum are powered by our partnership, our shared vision, and your incredible efforts. So thank you for choosing LifeWave. We're very, very grateful for each of you. Now, with so much darkness in the world today, these products provide an opportunity to share light, which symbolizes the essence of LifeWave, spreading light and vitality through revolutionary life technology products and standing as a beacon of integrity and growth to the world. In fact, it was 20 years ago that LifeWave embarked on a remarkable journey with a vision as simple and powerful as light itself. Founded by David, our story began with the groundbreaking discovery of harnessing light to boost the body's energy. Well, the rest is history. Now today, we, as we focus on IceWave and X39, which by the way, both have played a huge role in our story, remember that we're not just talking about the products, we're talking about the keystones of a healthier, happier life. So let's dive in with an open heart and mind, ready to explore how we can continue to change lives for the better. So thank you for being an essential part of this journey for your partnership, and for joining us on this call. Let's make today's webinar another step forward in our mission to enrich lives across the globe and share the light. Now with that, it's my honor and privilege to welcome CEO, founder, and inventor of LifeWave Technology, David Schmidt, to the call. David, are you with us? I am here. Uh, let's see if we can get... You have to start my video there, Jeff. Something that's been... Uh, oh, there back. you go. Uh, I see okay. you. <laughs> I feel embarrassed. Your opening address was so good. I'm not sure what I'm going to say now. That's <laughs> going to be meaningful. Well, look, I think they're all here to see you. I don't want to spoil it, but I, I, th I think they're all here to hear all the good stuff you have to say. And and what a topic today. It's it's one of my favorite, and I know uh, Ice Wave holds a special place for you and, and X39 as well. Absolutely does. You know, uh, for so many years before X39, the way that our brand partners would build the business would be with pain relief demonstrations. So uh, I traveled around the world with a number of our brand partners, uh, especially Roy Sorgiono. Just want to give a quick shout out to him because I think Roy holds the record for the number of countries uh, where we've done meetings together. Uh, it's pretty extraordinary. And I, I think be between the two of us, you know, we go back and forth on the numbers, but it's easily in the thousands of people that wow. we have patched over the years. And uh, we would take, um, go to a meeting with three, 400 people and take 20 or 30 people out of the audience and line them up and just go right down the line and patch them. And we would find out, uh, pretty much 100% of the time, we could get 50% to 100% pain relief within about two to three minutes. So we're going to be talking about uh, how we would use IceWave with X39 to optimize pain management. And the really great news here is that um, people that are suffering in pain there are alternatives. You don't have to live off of pharmaceuticals, which are only going to mask the pain. And today, we are going to cover a very broad range of subjects. So we're going to talk about really uh, the phenomena of pain so we can understand it both biochemically and uh, from the biophysics perspective, and then also what type of tools are available for people to use. 
uh, that will complement the use of the patches. So when someone has pain, they have a variety of tools that they can use to attack this and recover so they can be pain free. So uh, that's what we're going to uh, cover today. And I have two surprises, actually. Ooh, I'm excited. What are I they? Have, I have two surprises uh, for everybody that's on. We're well over a thousand people. So I thought I, I might do something fun. Uh, the first one I'm going to show now. And I am working on the world's first anti-aging metal. This would be a piece of metal that you wear on your body as a piece of jewelry that does something very specific to um, promote an anti-aging effect. So this is a uh, fixture uh, that we have with this metal and uh, it's getting ready to go into the lab for processing and for some tests. But the preliminary tests that I've done on, on it have been uh, pretty extraordinary. And uh, for those people that come to the Dallas conference, they may get to see a sneak peek at this uh, and uh, what is uh, what is ahead in the future for LifeWave. I love it. Now, you said two surprises. Do we get to hear the second one now or do we have to wait? I'll say the second surprise now, but it's coming up in a little bit. So I thought I would spice things up a little bit. I was going through my notes last night for this. And, uh, you know, I think pain relief is actually a very exciting subject because uh, I know as a staff, we take tremendous enjoyment at seeing people get out of pain with our products. But just to spice it up a little bit, I thought what we could do today is uh, show people, well, this would be men that are suffering in pain, how to improve their sexual performance at the same time as getting pain relief. And of course, that's going to benefit the ladies as well. So uh, that's the second surprise that I had. And and I would say that this is going to be something I can almost guarantee that um, people haven't heard of before because I actually found it by accident in a rather obscure patent. Um, yeah. So uh, So we're going to talk about that. And, uh, and, and it's going to be fun. So why don't we get started? All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Well, let's go ahead. I want to start first uh, about talking about some references. Th th this is an absolutely enormous subject. And for those of you that are interested, um, there are several books that I think you might find of interest. One is uh, relatively new compared to the others, and uh, this is from Dr. Jerry Tennant, and it's called, as you can see here, Healing with Voltage. Healing is Voltage, rather, um, and th this is a, a pretty good-sized book. It would take you quite a bit of time to go through it, but it's, uh, it's a very enjoyable read. Uh, but Dr. Uh, Tennant correctly shows the connection between the bioelectrical properties of the body and pain and uh, what people can do to heal by fostering the correct bioelectrical environment. And of course, we can use this information to relieve pain, but it goes very much further than that. So for example, with LifeWave patches, one of the things that we're doing is uh, using the technology to improve the metabolism. And we do this by increasing the energy output from the mitochondria. So when we have increased energy production and improved flow of energy through the body, a consequence to this is reduction in pain. But an underlying mechanism is an anti-aging effect. And what I mean by that is that as we age, the potential of the cell begins to decrease. And we can actually correlate the age of the body and the age of the cells to a biological age. And some people are going to age faster than others. This would be similar to how we could correlate the true biological age to the length of the telomeres. So someone could be 50 or 60 years old, but biologically speaking, maybe they're only 30 or 40 years old. 
And uh, we do this through measuring uh, different attributes in the cell, uh, such as inflammatory stress, telomeres, and the cell capacitance and the phase angle. So this would be a very good book that would uh, give you more than an overview on how we can use energy therapies to heal the body and how the bioelectrical systems control the biochemistry. So that is one resource for you. Um, another resource, now this is going back many decades now, uh, by Dr. Robert Becker, The Body Electric. This is really a classic uh, in, in, uh, in, in terms of the uh, energy medicine community. And Dr. Becker, uh, as it says here, is a pioneer in the field and um, was really addressing how the electrical systems in the body control the biochemistry and then how we can use these properties to improve upon the way that human beings regenerate. I remember reading this uh, book when I was uh, much younger and enjoying it. The, the information in this today, I would say, is uh, significantly outdated, uh, but a number of the underlying principles are still quite valid, meaning you know, since this book originally came out, I think it was maybe first published in the late 1960s, uh, there, there has been an awful lot learned about stem cells and uh, the bioelectrical fields around the human body, uh, but still, nonetheless, uh, an excellent resource. And then I also wanted to include another one of my childhood favorites uh, was Magnetism and Its Effects on the Living System. And uh, this book, very, very interesting because it actually, one of the things it shows is that weak magnetic fields have a more powerful effect on the body than strong magnetic fields. So for those of you that use magnets in healing, I'd recommend that you take a look at the experiments that have been done in this book. Uh, because what it's very going to clearly show is that uh, when you have a magnetic field that's too strong, you're not going to get a biological effect. We found this out in our own research. Uh, we have well over 70 patents on pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. And uh, one of the things that we do with our devices is we make the magnetic fields extremely weak, uh, fractions of a gauss. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field is somewhere between half a gauss and a gauss, so we really have fields that more closely mimic um, the fields that you would find around the Earth. So that's important. Another thing that would be important about this, and this is actually relevant a little bit to our discussion today about ice wave, and you could say the same thing for energy enhancer. Um, we have, of course, I've got two energy patches here. As everyone knows, we have a white patch and we have a tan patch. White is positive, tan is negative. Well, interestingly, um, what these scientists found is that the north pole of a magnet has a different effect than the south pole. The south pole would be stimulating, the north pole more sedating. And this is important because in... Um, Magnetic jewelry, it is not often distinguished between the North or the South Pole. Uh, the manufacturers, they're not really thinking about it. They're really promoting the strength of the magnetic field. And this is a mistake. Uh, this uh, seminal work demonstrates that the effects of these poles are different, just like you would have positive and negative uh, poles in a battery or another system. Uh, this has to do with uh, the way that enter the direction with which energy flows. Uh, so for example, they did experiments on the use of these magnets in pain relief and also in treatment of cancer. So they found that with a South Pole magnetic field, as I recall, uh, that this could actually speed up a uh, a cancer line, whereas a North Pole magnetic field would slow it down and sedate it. 
On the other hand, if someone didn't have cancer and you use a South Pole, you could improve the function of the immune system. So this is really, uh, you need to know what you're doing with these things like any other tool. So it's a fascinating read and uh, it's a very, very easy read and uh, I would definitely recommend it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the factors around pain. Now, the we can describe pain in terms of the biochemistry or the bioelectrical properties of the tissue. And what's important to know is that when you have an injury, there is going to be a immediate release of oxidative chemicals to suppress bacterial infection. These oxidative chemicals give rise to inflammatory chemicals, which are there to uh, tear down the damaged tissue. And the inflammatory cytokines act as the signaling molecules for stem cells. This was discovered at Sanford Burnham in uh, La Jolla, California, uh, very close to uh, our office there. And um, Dr. Evan Snyder uh, was the one that made that discovery. Really great guy. And so uh, the important thing about this is that if you're in pain and you have a chronic injury, so let's say that you, you've got an injury, it hasn't been healing. What's happened with this? And I'll tell you the experience of uh, a leader that I spoke with during the past week. They used X39 on a chronic injury and they initially didn't get any results. The issue here is that if you don't get the inflammation under control, then the stem cells will die at the injury site and you will not be able to heal properly. So for some people, applying X39 for managing the pain as one option works just great. For other people, though, with a chronic injury, this could have to do with age, diet, poor sleep, poor hydration, poor mineralization, could be a variety of factors. We're going to talk about how to get past all of these things. Um, the, the important thing is here, though, is that for some people that are not healing from a chronic injury, you've got to get the inflammation under control so the stem cells can heal the injury. So this could be a variety of different things. You could use nutritional supplements to do this. You can use exercise. You can use the patches. You could apply an Eon patch to the point of pain. Uh, and this will get the inflammation under control, X39 on the back of the neck or below the belly button, and you've got great pain management. Of course, because we're talking about ice wave today, ice wave is wonderful, right? You could apply the ice wave patches on the bottom of the feet, help to get the uh, pain and inflammation under control. Now X39 can do its job. So I just wanted to include this link because it shows the um, bioelectrical effects of pain. The biochemistry is extremely complicated, so I have simplified it uh, pretty dramatically, uh, but at least you have a little bit of an essence with it. But it's important to know, and the point of this is that pain, the pain phenomena has two components to it. One is the biochemistry, one is the biophysics or bioelectrical properties, if you wish. And what that means is that we have options for how we treat pain. If we take the approach that we're going to balance out the biochemistry of the body and use bioenergetic devices, different types of healing therapies, bioenergy uh, therapies, if we use them together with biochemistry, the results are going to be extraordinarily better. And we're going to talk about a number of options that you have here for all of these things. So let's get into that. Um, also, diagnosis is uh, is a really important thing. Over the years, 
we've been really blessed uh, to work with a, a number of great researchers. And one of the tools that we've used is thermal imaging. And this is something I would definitely recommend for all women, let's say over the age of 40, I'd recommend that you uh, get a thermal image uh, maybe once a year or as your practitioner recommends because thermal imaging can detect breast cancer years before it actually ever shows up. I've heard estimates of five or six years before it shows up. And thermal imaging is completely non-invasive, doesn't use uh, any type of radiation, completely safe for the human body. Uh, another benefit to thermal imaging is that it gives you a data point. So the way that we've used it in our studies is to take a thermal image and then also to uh, do a blood or urine test to look at inflammation. So in other words, by doing the blood or urine test, we can determine which inflammatory markers are elevated, and then the thermal image tells us where the inflammation is. So this is a uh, very valuable data. Um, of course, if we had an image like this, it would be much easier to patch, uh, but in this particular case, we could simply apply, uh, let's say a white patch on the back of the neck and a tan patch at the base of the spine, and we would be able to see a reduction in, in pain and inflammation along the spine very, very quickly. And uh, of course, the reason why this shows up is that thermal imaging, uh, just like it sounds, uh, relies on body heat, and body heat is infrared light. So we have infrared light, a form of energy, electromagnetic energy coming off of our body. And we can see that the, there is a change in the electromagnetic energy with inflammation. So we see the connection between the chemistry and the physics. Okay. Now, I want to do a shout out to my buddy, Dr. Norm Sheely. Uh, we are so unbelievably grateful to have had the acquaintance of Dr. Sheely over the years and have him do studies for LifeWave. And I can't say enough great things about him and the contributions that Dr. Sheely has made to the uh, energy medicine community and the alternative healthcare community community. He is a true hero and champion. And uh, one of the things that Dr. Sheely spent many years on was uh, TENS therapy, different types of TENS therapy where people could get drug-free pain relief. And of course, uh, this is showing that we can use an energy device to relieve pain. And for some people, this works great. For other people, they don't respond to it. Uh, but this is to say that there's alternatives to pharmaceutical drugs where we're using electrical energy to manage the pain. So that's the important concept here. Now, if we can manage pain with um, electricity, what about electromagnetism? So you may remember from physics, when we have a flow of electrical energy, let's say through a wire, we are going to get electromagnetic fields at right angles off of that conductor. And this is the basis for forming uh, electromagnetic fields. And of course, that's how we can have power generation today, thanks to Nikola Tesla. And um, we can have electric motors, alternators, and other devices. Uh, in this particular case, here is a uh, form of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, which involves a ring or a coil placed around an injury site. And you can see we have a giant set of electronics there. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that um, you wouldn't want to walk around with uh, this giant ring on your shoulder. And also, um, this is time consuming and expensive. Uh, but I would say magnetic field therapy can have its value. Um, if I was going to be critical about this, because we've done our own research, I would say many of the magnetic field therapy devices that are on the market 
the field intensity is too strong. And uh, my personal preference based on many, many years of research here is that you want to use weaker electromagnetic fields. Uh, and this has been shown with a number of devices that are already on the market to improve microcirculation, have pain relief and promote healing, but these devices are expensive. Uh, now, of course, I also want to show that red light therapy, which is infrared therapy, of course, has been used for pain relief. And here's a device uh, where it's 20 minutes a day, and you can see the claims they're making is for treating a variety of different types of aches and pains, inflammation, and even faster healing. And this is all fine, but many of us are busy and we don't want to take uh, this amount of time uh, out of our day to deal with pain. It'd be a little bit of a headache. So, you know, what kind of options do we have? Well, ice wave, of course, the benefit is that we're going to stimulate the skin with very low levels of light and we get the benefits of light therapy, but the convenience of using a Band-Aid. Just simply apply the patches and go. Now, when in doubt, when in doubt, if you're just getting started, by far the easiest and most effective things to do would be to apply the ice wave patches on the bottom of the feet for pain relief. Uh, in acupuncture, this is a point called kidney one. You put the uh, white patch on the bottom of the right foot and the tan patch on the bottom of the left foot. If that were the bottom of my foot, that would be about where it goes. It's called the kidney one acupuncture point. And this is very effective at relieving pain even throughout the entire body. So as a protocol, you could place X39 on the back of the neck and then the ice wave patches on the bottom of the feet. I've met medical doctors where that is their go-to. They're very busy, they wanna help their patients and they just have the patches on the bottom of the feet and then they just go from there. And we could actually spend quite a bit of time talking about all of the benefits of putting the patches on the bottom of the feet, including longevity. Now, what about if you wanted to try something a little bit more specialized? Uh, I'll tell you something that happened an hour ago. My son came to me, he's 25, and he was exercising yesterday, and he felt that he kind of tore a muscle in his abdomen. Something was a little bit off and uh, he was in pain. So I said, great, let me show you the clock protocol. So we put a tan patch on the point of pain. And when you're working with somebody, it's really as simple as saying, okay, what's your level of pain? Let's say we're on a scale of zero to 10. Where's your pain level at? You want to substantiate this first. Then you have the person point to the pain and you put a tan patch there. And then you're going to go three inches, let's say 75 millimeters from that tan patch and apply a white patch to the 12 o'clock or three o'clock position if you're looking at a clock. You don't have to wait very long, five seconds if you wish. And then you ask the person, okay, what's the pain level at? So in the case of my son, I said, okay, if the pain started at a 10, what is it now? And he said, uh, okay, I, I think it's dropped down to a six. That feels much, much better. I said, okay, great. Then we moved it to the six o'clock position. And I told them to move around. It was five seconds later. And he said, okay, I think it's about the same. Maybe better, but I think it's about the same. Then we moved it to the nine o'clock position. And he said, oh, okay, this is dropped again. It's at a four. And, I, and he wanted to leave it there. And I said, okay, fine. So in a matter of 30 seconds, we took the pain down from a 10 to a four. Probably could have got it down lower, uh, but he was already 
happy with that. And he wanted to leave the patches there and, and that was fine with me. So the clock method is incredibly powerful when it comes to pain relief. Now, let's say that you have a circumstance where someone has pain throughout the entire body and they've had it for a long time. What do you do? Well, again, this is relatively easy. You could apply a X39 to the back of the neck. You apply one set of ice wave on the bottom of the feet on that same point. And then you're going to apply another set of ice wave patches on the upper torso. Now, you have a number of options here. Um, I would suggest that you apply them here up on the shoulders. And we generally find that this location uh, works very well with the location under the feet. So you'd have two set of ice wave patches on. And uh, you'll find that after, uh, some people will respond immediately within a minute. You'll see their pain will drop 70%. Other people might take a little bit longer, might take 20 minutes. Uh, but it's a very easy protocol and you don't have to be moving things around. So that would be if you had pain throughout the entire body. Let's say that you had someone which just had localized pain in the lower back. Well, you could simply do what we call bracket the pain, uh, which would be applying a white patch on the right side of the pain and a tan patch on the left side. And that protocol we found over the years works extremely well. So you have a number of tools there with IceWave, a number of protocols that are very, very simple and extremely effective. And uh, we've performed, I think it's 18 clinical studies on ice wave, and we've repeatedly shown uh, that it is just a phenomenal product for managing pain. Okay, let's move on and take a look at some other things now. So let's say that you're using ice wave, you're getting good results, and you want to look at some other things. What else can you do to improve the quality of your life and uh, and make sure that this pain that you've had for many years doesn't come back? And of course, we're just talking about chronic pain now, not acute pain. Well, if pain is a bioelectrical phenomena as well as bio, uh, if it's a bioelectrical phenomena as well as biochemical, what that must mean is that it has something to do with an imbalance of electrolytes, uh, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium. So what we would expect to find is that if this is true, there should be a link between electrolytes and pain management. And in fact, there is. This is the great news. So I want you to think about this for a moment. There are studies that we can find that show a link between pain management and potassium. This is uh, not a bad article because it gives an overview of some of the benefits of potassium supplementation. Um, you could get, hypothetically, enough potassium in your diet, uh, but in modern diets, we're not getting enough. So I'd recommend you look at 500 milligrams or even 1,000 milligrams per day to supplement with potassium. You would take this as a potassium citrate powder. And there are enormous benefits to taking potassium. First of all, many of you probably drink alkaline water. That's fine. Um, but what was found at Oxford is that it's actually potassium that regulates the alkalinity of the cell and maintains homeostasis between acid and alkalinity. So by taking potassium, we're alkalizing the body. Here we go. Potassium, in a study in 2008, shows a strong anti-pain effect. When was the last time 
you went to your doctor and said, doctor, I'm in pain. And the doctor said, well, great. I have a solution. I want you to eat avocados and bananas and your pain is going to be just fine. Right? Most, <laughs> and I am not poking fun at doctors. I have nothing but admiration for doctors the because they provide an extraordinarily valuable service. It's just that we know medical doctors, most of them, don't get the training in nutrition that we'd really want them to have. There are many doctors I've met that are an exception to this. The point is here is that there are alternatives and something as simple and inexpensive as potassium has been shown to have a strong anti-pain effect. So yes, you can modify your diet, take sunflower seeds, uh, avocados, uh, bananas, those apricots, these things that are high in potassium, but it's certainly very convenient. Um, I wouldn't recommend 6,000 milligrams a day, by the way, that's really high on supplements, again, 500 to 1,000 milligrams. Another benefit is that potassium assists with the um, making the uh, arteries more flexible. And as a result, potassium can reduce high blood pressure. And of course, this is really safe, really effective, and uh, not going to be any toxic side effects like pharmaceutical drugs. So potassium is a way that you can help regulate your high blood pressure. Um, one thing that I'll mention as a side note, since it's not here, and I did this research work 40 years ago, almost 40 years ago, just a little bit less, about 38 years ago, is uh, I found that when you increase the amount of potassium in the cell, cancer cells die. I did this work with uh, neuroblastomas, a, a TBJ uh, neuroblastoma and a C1300. And uh, the difference between the two is one is immunogenic and the other is non-immunogenic. But in any case, that doesn't matter. The, what matters is that because potassium is regulating the alkalinity of the cell, as you increase the amount of potassium in the body, you can reduce the proliferation of cancer cells or even kill cancer cells. Um, but that's a separate story. So enormous benefits to potassium. Now. I, Jeff, I talked a little bit earlier. I made a promise that I was going to show people some of the things they could do, specifically men, on ways to improve sexual performance and get pain relief at the same time. And one of those things is potassium. This is a three-part solution, okay? So for men that would like to improve their sexual performance and improve their health, reduce their risk of heart disease, reduce their risk of cancer. We're going to cover that in the end. One of them, though, is potassium. And the reason why potassium improves sexual performance, uh, and I don't think I need to be any, any more explicit than that, uh, the reason why it improves sexual performance is that potassium recycles nitric oxide. So nitric oxide that most of you have heard of is a vasodilator. It is what uh, expands and relaxes the arteries and improves blood flow. And when a men have erectile dysfunction or reduced sexual performance, this is uh, typically an issue with them making or utilizing nitric oxide. Uh, they may have had damages to the endothelial lining where nitric oxide is made. But if they have a deficiency of potassium, it compounds the problem. So what we're getting at here is there's a three-part solution, and it goes further than that, but we're just going to cover this today as an aside. One is you want to elevate nitric oxide. The other is you want to keep the nitric oxide in circulation, and potassium will do that. Okay. Now, speaking of which, let's talk about nitric oxide. This is a, a Nobel Prize winning discovery. And um, 
think you know we could again talk for a long time about this. Uh, Louis Ignaro, who won uh, the Nobel Prize for discovering uh, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, by the way, is a gas, so it's not something you can supplement with. It's something that is made in the human body. Traditionally, people have used arginine for making nitric oxide. And this is okay, but there's actually better ways to do it. If you have a diet rich in beets, beets are net, are a source of nitrates, uh, naturally occurring nitrites and nitrates, and they will elevate nitric oxide. They convert very, very efficiently in the body. And there's even some supplements uh, that offer uh, nit sodium nitrite, I believe. Uh, which converts over to nitric oxide. Another way to do it, though, is with the amino acid citrulline, and this is found in watermelon. Uh, many people noticed they would, men uh, eating watermelon, it would give them an erection. Uh, and this is because the citrulline that is in watermelon converts over to, to arginine in the body but it bypasses the arginase in the gut. So it's the, the uh, citrulline is not destroyed in the gut the way arginine is. So citrulline is actually a very effective way of elevating nitric oxide. So if you're a man, well, if, if you're a man or woman, you're interested in using nitric oxide for pain relief, let's say about three grams in water. This would be at powder. And uh, it doesn't have any flavor, uh, so it's completely neutral. And it would be the, a similar dose if you wanted to use this for improving sexual performance. Uh, that really goes for men and women, uh, but of course we would normally think about this for men. Uh, but the good news here is that uh, with nitric oxide, not only has it been shown to be effective for pain relief, uh, but of course, because it elevates, it, because it's a vasodilator, it's going to improve circulation and improve the health of the heart. And nitric oxide also reduces the risk of uh, heart attack and stroke. So I think it'd also be fair to say nitric oxide reduces blood pressure. So this is a wonderful way to help be part of managing pain and also getting a number of other benefits. So if you've been uh, suffering with chronic pain, you're using tools like IceWave and X39, and uh, you wanna look at some ways of preventing that pain from coming back and really improving your health, this would be a very powerful way of doing that and getting some other benefits as well. Okay, now, um, Okay, I'm going to show you something fun here. Here is the third component. Now, we talked about Jeff is peeking and looking ahead, probably like everybody else. <laughs> so no no, no harm done, Jeff. Uh, okay, so you're going to take uh, citrulline to elevate your nitric oxide. You're going to take your potassium to recirculate the nitric oxide, and both of them individually are going to help uh, reduce and manage pain. What else would we want to do? Well, we'd want to use a PDE5 inhibitor because this will keep the nitric oxide more active. And of course, we know that synthetic PDE5 inhibitors are things like Viagra. And in fact, Viagra was originally invented as a uh, heart medication, but then when men started getting erections, uh, Pfizer changed the way that they wanted to market it and, uh, and Viagra was born. But there are many natural PDE5 inhibitors, uh, some of them more effective than others. Uh, there's one called horny goat weed that many men have heard of in the natural products community, and um, that is all fine. But here's what I, I, I happened to find this patent quite by accident when doing some research on an unrelated uh, subject. I was looking for something that would uh, actually improve uh, CGMP levels um, because this is related to an anti-aging 
uh, effect in the body. And I happened to come across uh, this patent. So this would be mangosteen peel extract. This would be one of them. And uh, it is uh, relatively easy to get here in the United States. Uh, I found this on the internet. I've, I found it being sold on Amazon, which I was quite surprised at uh, because it's not something that is typically available over the counter. But mangosteen peel extract, it's a powder. You just take a small amount and you could take this at bedtime with your citrulline and your uh, potassium. Uh, this will act as a uh, PDE5 inhibitor and will make the nitric oxide more effective. And of course, this is also going to improve energy production in the body and as a result can contribute to pain relief. Uh, but here, very expressly, it's being used for uh, improving sexual performance in men. Okay, now I have fulfilled my promise. Now I want to talk about another one uh, because people's diets are so poor today uh, because of demineralization of the soil. And I'll try to get through, through some of these last things quickly so we, we leave room for uh, questions. Uh, but do not underestimate the power of copper. Back in the 1950s, the recommended daily allowance of copper was three milligrams. Today, it's less than a third of that. And um, if you look online, you'll see that doctors will say there is no connection between copper and pain relief. And this is simply untrue because there are plenty of studies that show what happens when we get a copper deficiency. This article is going to lay them out, but uh, just to highlight the first one, fatigue and weakness. That is a known symptom of a copper deficiency. Well, what have we been talking about is that pain relief results from poor energy flow. And if someone is fatigued, they've got poor energy flow. So I would say this is a pretty strong clue that copper contributes to pain relief. It even gets more obvious than that. Copper is part of cytochrome C oxidase. It's a copper-containing enzyme. And we know that this enzyme is absolutely necessary for the production of energy in the cell. So if you don't have cytochrome C oxidase, you're out of luck. So when we have copper deficiencies, it goes without saying, we're going to have a reduced capacity to make energy in the cell. If we have a reduced capacity to make energy in the cell, we're going to have inflammation and we're going to have pain. So very strong connection here between copper and pain relief. And it's cheap, 2.5 milligrams a day, very inexpensive. Here's another, uh, I thought I'd show you a clinical study here. This is extraordinary because this shows that copper deficiency is linked to permanent neurological damage. And I don't know about you, but when I think of neurological damage, I think of the nerves and I think of pain. So it seems ludicrous to me uh, that in the literature, there would be studies saying there's no connection between copper and pain. It's just silly. Uh, truth of the matter is that we can use very small amounts of copper to assist energy production in the body, protect us from viruses, protect us from bacterial infections, and help manage our pain. All right, very quickly now, some other tools that you may have. Let's say that you have a chronic injury and it's not healing because you have scar tissue. You've got to get rid of the scar tissue to heal. One enzyme to do that is called serapeptase. Many of you uh, may not have heard of it before, but the benefit of using serapeptase is that it can break down the scar tissue and allow your body to heal. It also by itself has anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, speak, I am not a medical doctor, should have said that on the front end. This is all for information and to take you to your healthcare practitioner but things like serapeptase, if you're already 
have a heart condition, you're on blood thinners, talk to your doctor first. Okay, a few things here very quickly. Taurine. Taurine is an amino acid, and it's a very powerful anti-aging amino acid, and it has a host of benefits. Uh, but here, now we have a study showing that taurine induces significant analgesic effects. So we can use something as simple as the amino acid taurine to get pain relief, support pain relief, and to also promote anti-aging. Also produces a relaxation effect. Here's another study. This is incredible. Taurine is a therapeutic agent. Uh, we know that taurine is actually more effective than pharmaceutical drugs at reducing blood pressure. So again, you could be using taurine with the patches as part of an overall program to manage pain, and here you're going to be able to keep your blood sugar under control and uh, your blood pressure under control. Uh, magnesium, we've talked about this many times, so I'll just skip through it. Most people have a magnesium deficiency. Like potassium, magnesium is an electrolyte. So you absolutely want to include something like magnesium glycinate uh, in your daily supplement package to help manage pain. And then last but not least, I want to mention this. DMSO uh, has really been attacked by the FDA and the medical community over the years, uh, probably because it's been found effective in treating a whole variety of different diseases like cancer and different viruses. And DMSO uh, can be applied topically to areas of pain and acts as a very powerful anti-inflammatory. Uh, now, I will say a caution on this is that DMSO is a blood thinner and you can't take too much of it. Another downside to DMSO, it leaves the breath smelling like garlic. So it has its downsides, uh, but it is a tool that you can have in your arsenal for managing a very severe inflammation and pain. So, uh, Jeff, I probably went a little bit longer than I wanted to. Uh, we can go right to questions. But I think the important thing here is that when someone is suffering in pain, there are an enormous number of options that they can be using to ma manage the pain. You don't, people don't have to live with it. There's any number of different things that they can do and preferably take a holistic approach and use our patches with proper diet, proper supplementation, exercise, sleep, hydration, and, um, and and people will get amazing effects with it. Well, thank you so much for uh, for the the wisdom and, and walking through that. It was, I took a tremendous number of notes as always. Um, we did have some questions come in. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to pick out a couple. It looks like we have time for probably three, four, uh, depending on how long they are. But uh, you are qualified, you know, you're not a medical doctor, but a lot of the questions around pain come in you know, what's your recommendation or have you come across any literature or research around headaches or migraines and maybe the best way to manage those? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a number of things that people suffering with migraines can do. Uh, number one, everything that we discussed in this webinar would still apply. So I would definitely recommend uh, they use things like taurine to relax the nervous system to use magnesium and uh, use potassium, use citrulline. Uh, and then there is a uh, compound called phosphatidylserine. Uh, phosphatidylserine is a nootropic and uh, it's used for uh, obviously improving cognition, but some people that use phosphatidylserine have shown, uh, and serine is S-E-R-I-N-E, -E, um, People that use phosphatidylserine have reported a reduction in migraines. So, um, yeah, so there, I, I would be using those options: uh, citrulline, but in addition to our patches, of course, citrulline, potassium, um, phosphatidylserine, taurine, magnesium—all really great options for managing migraines. Very good. Now, there are a lot of questions and comments coming in on the supplements that we're looking 
uh, to to launch, um, and and many of those are asking the question. You know, you you brought several supplements. What will those contain? And you know, will are those in line with some of the things that you've talked about today? Absolutely. So of course, we did uh, an entire session on this at the Vision Conference, and the um, supplements that we're coming out with, which is a morning formula and an evening formula, are designed to work with all of the patches. So the daytime formula works with all of the daytime patches, evening formula with all the evening. So uh, these formulas will have uh, the, they'll have the ingredients that we've been talking about today, many of them anyway, not all of them, but many of them. Very good. Yeah. Uh, another question that came in is uh, to kind of twofold, what's the best source of copper? And then second to that is, you know, would you need to to still supplement copper, you know, when wearing uh, an X39 patch, for example? So it depends on diet. And uh, the best, I'm sorry to say for most people, but the best source of copper from the diet would be with liver. Uh, now, I love liver, and there's a number of great benefits to liver, but I don't eat it every day, and, and many people don't. Uh, and that's totally fine. Uh, but uh, one of the next best sources of copper is going to be from dark chocolate. And we do know that dark chocolate has a whole host of benefits. 72% uh, cacao and above uh, is even going to support the stem cell activity in the body. Uh, wheatgrass is another great source of copper. Um, but to cover, I would say taking 2.5 milligrams of copper glycinate daily it would be a good way to supplement with copper um, on a daily basis. Very good. Okay, we maybe have time for uh, one more here. Uh, so this is probably longer than a couple of minute question, but somebody said, you know, when you were talking at the beginning of how you used to travel the world and, and do meetings specifically around ice wave, uh, maybe just a little bit more context on how, how you might approach a demonstration or how you might you know, uh, go about that during a meeting uh, that would be the most effective for demonstrating ice wave. Yeah. So to put this in context, we've given three hour training sessions in the past on how to use ice wave for a whole variety of circumstances. But I would say um, the, there, there are several steps involved for an ice wave demo. The first one is you want to find out, is this an acute or chronic pain? And is the person in pain when you're patching them? And also, have they taken a pharmaceutical drug? If they say, yeah, I was in pain, but I took pain medication an hour ago. Okay, well, you're not really going to know if the patches are going to work or not. Uh so you want to collect some of that information. So let's say the person says, yeah, I'm in pain now, and it's like a 10 out of 10. Okay. Then you want to find out how long has the person been in pain? Is it acute or chronic? Is this something they did in the, the you know a couple of days ago, or has it been going on for years? Uh, that's, that's good information to have. Uh, you also want to find out, is the pain localized? Is it intense in one area or is the pain kind of throughout the body? That's going to change about how you do a, a patch protocol. So spending one or two minutes collecting this information up front is going to determine where you put the patches. Now that all said, for someone getting started, keep it simple, X39 on the back of the neck, ice wave on the bottom of the feet, and then maybe a second set of ice wave on top of the shoulders, and you're good to go. Love it. Well, yeah. David, as always, thank you so much for your time and, and wisdom and for uh, this webinar. I know we are just about out of time. In closing, is there anything else that you'd like to share with uh, the community here? I think the, the thing that I would say, Jeff, is the amazing thing about our planet uh, that God created is that it is full of natural solutions. Even in the Bible, it talks about herbs being plants, being our medicine. And this is so true. So if we turn to nature and uh, we're going to be able to find solutions to most of life's problems. 
And so when a person is suffering in pain, which everyone has been at one point, we know how terrible and debilitating it is. And the, the wonderful news is that we have so many things at our disposal today for relieving pain, and it's not necessary for someone to have to suffer. There are solutions. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, that's it for us. We're at the hour, and uh, thank you. We'll see you next month. Thanks, Jeff. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.